of our invocation and um, Ms. Peterson, our Pledge of Allegiance. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so grateful to have another opportunity to gather here as, as leaders and citizens of the Jackson County School District. Lord, we, we call on you tonight. We ask you for your, for your wisdom uh, and your leadership to, to help us to make decisions that are in the best interest of our, our children teachers and our citizens here in Jackson County. Be with our board and, uh, and, and lead us forward. But Lord, we ask that you be with our, our schools and every person in this room. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Uh, welcome to this meeting of the Jackson County Board of Education, where we will discuss the business and financial needs of the district. And later on, we will enter into executive session, where we will discuss uh, legal and personnel matters. Um, do I have uh, consent agenda items? Yes. Mr. Chairman, I will move to add the following items to consent agenda. The item 7D, 2, 3, 8, 9, and 11. Item 7E, 2 through 9. Item 7F, 1 through 5, 7 and 8. Item 7G, 4. Item 7I, 1. Item 7J, 1 through 4. Item 7K, 2 and 3. Item 7L, 1 through 9. And item 7M, 1 through 18. All right, you've heard uh, the consent agenda in the form of a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Dickerson. Any discussion? All in favor? I don't know. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the agenda? Motion approved. Motion by Mr. Dickerson. Second. Second. Second I, by Mr. Book. Mr. Howell, uh, any discussion? Yes. I would like to um, amend the agenda. Move a move. Sorry. Add a motion to amend the agenda to add item 7L11, which is to approve a contract with Jackson County Community Center, St. Martin Shelter, for the rental of that St. Martin Shelter by St. Martin High School for the JROTC banquet on April 2nd, 2022. L11, you said L11. 7 L11. Okay. okay, so we have um, a motion for an amendment. We have a second. Second. Second by Mr. Howell. In favor of the amendment? I don't know. That's the original motion. Any further discussion? I think we have some like public comment. Does it need to be added to we need to have public comment to the agenda. Do we have a public comment? I think we have someone who wanted to sign in for public comment in the audience. Is it? Are you doing it? Are you Is there a sign up going out there? Where are you? There's a sign that there's a regular sign in for, but not as specific as we to give us prior notice that they be aware. Does anyone present wish to address the board in the comments section? Is it in regards to that topic or another? Any, uh, according to okay, policy, I all right, all right. sorry, it's according sorry, to I'm policy, sorry, I wasn't aware. Yeah. Maybe we need to check our policy real quick. According to policy, if they wanted to just ha just address the board for three minutes, it was within our policy. Okay. Can we do that in your area before we start? Yes. I'm aware of like that. Uh, we don't like that. Um, you need to create, somebody's going to do a public comment when we do that agenda item. Okay. I need a standing agenda item for it. Okay. I'll make it part of my update for now. Okay. So prior to like 7B1. I guess will be comments. B2 will be your update, Dr. Stricker. Okay, yes, sir. Good with that? Yes. Okay. All right, so that's a motion? Yes. 
Um, we have a second? Second. Second one, Mr. Dickerson. All in favor of that amendment? I don't know. Now back to the original motion, which was to approve the agenda. Uh, any other discussion? All in favor? Five and up. All right. Jack, how are we on the minutes? Yeah, today we look good. We made some changes, some minor changes, and they, they're good. And everybody was here. Good. Okay, we have a motion to approve the February 14th minutes. A motion on Mr. Dickerson. Second. Second on Mr. Powell. Any discussion? All in favor? I don't know. Dr. Stricker. Okay. <coughs> we uh, had a, a program uh, before the board meeting recognizing our parent of the year, teacher of the year, and administrator of the year. And, uh, you know, in summary, it was, you know, it's a 45 minute program, so to summarize, but I do, do want to, you know, on the record that uh, these are incredible people uh, that that uh, make the difference in our district. So it was a, it was a great program, and I'd like to thank everybody that was there and part of it, those in the team that set that up. Our district parent of the year was Kimberly Carroll. District teacher of the year was Fred Walton. And district administrator of the year was Dr. Ashley Allred. And so uh, if you see any of those people, uh, you know, again, I, we don't want to take time to reiterate everything they've done for the district, please say something to them. Uh, that was out of a, we're talking about large school district, 1,400 employees, or 14, yeah, 1,400 employees, 10,000 students, you know, that's quite, quite an accomplishment. So if you see them, if you would, please say something. So, okay, my update. <coughs> next, next slide, please. I just take 10 seconds for anyone that's watching or in the audience uh, for your first time at our board meetings. Uh, this is our scorecard. This, this is uh, what I review each month. With my staff, uh, I try to bring, as a, as a long-time coach, I try to bring the intensity of the football field to the, to the classroom. And these are the scoreboards, and this, this is, these are the different areas. These are the goals by the Board of Education, set by the Board of Education that I'm to follow on. Before Penny uh, discusses uh, increased student achievement, I would like to say that a lot of what Penny is talking about in my administrative team as we dig into, uh, you know, getting through getting through the pandemic, took energy, and it, it distracted. There's no doubt about it. It distracted from uh, instruction. It, it distracted from a lot of the regular classroom activities. Uh, but I will say that uh, uh, as we dig into best practices in our district, while we are in a district, we can do better. And uh, I, won't, I won't say we're stumbling upon how we can do better. I would just say that uh, we are finding uh, some significant uh, areas in which improvement can take place. And uh, Glenn and I go back to uh, two years ago, I think the way we put it was the New England Patriots. Uh, but whatever sports area you're in, whether you're in music or whatever, you always know that there's going to be certain, whether it's music, athletics, or whatever, certain teams that are vying for a championship every year. There's going to be the teams that now have the weekend, but each year there's going to be teams that are there for sure. When we, as we dig in and with my leadership team and discuss these areas where we can improve and fine tune and streamline, it should be an expectation each year that we're in, a, not something that. It's just happening. It's this great celebration. Don't get me wrong, we'll celebrate it. But it should be an expectation. So a lot of what Penny is finding in, in the leadership team, not just in curriculum, are areas that, uh, that I'm certain once we refine those areas and streamline those areas and, and make adjustments, uh, it will be an expectation to be an A, not, not something that's special while we will celebrate it. So with that said, I'll turn it over to Penny uh, for her update regarding student achievement. Good evening. Um, I have a uh, black folder in front of you. Um, before we get to that information, I do want to address some of these other items that are bolted on the screen. Um, for the short-term curriculum focus areas, we continue to utilize mid-year diagnostic and benchmark data to provide support for our schools and teachers in our focus content and grade level areas. Uh, we, we are continuing to uh, go out to the schools and work with our teachers, work with our administrators, and uh, provide that support that we feel uh, where it's necessary. Um, 
that play data, or we feel that it will uh, cause improvement in instruction and improvement, improvement in academic achievement. Um, for the curriculum long-term plan, um, so the first bullet has to do with pacing. Our curriculum specialists are working with teachers to prepare pacing guides for the 22-23 school year. We do that in a team approach where we, um, we go out to the schools, we talk to the teachers, um, and then we pull in committees uh, with representation from each school and develop those together. Um, we use also our data and our the uh, information from the State Department of Education regarding uh, the, the blueprints for each test so that we can make sure that we're focusing on and provide, prioritizing those areas that are most important um, on those tests. Um, the ACT summer tutoring plans, we are working with our ACT instructional coaches and administrators to plan for our second ACT summer tutoring session. Um, in order to do that, we are providing ACE training for additional teachers. We are fine-tuning our tutoring protocol and we are developing marketing strategies so that we can advertise the tutoring uh, sessions and the opportunity for our teachers and our, I mean, our students and our parents. Um, and we have subscribed to You Can Book Me uh, for scheduling uh, the sessions so that our students can, or parents can just access um, and schedule those sessions um, at home or wherever it's convenient. So now if you'll open your um, black folders on the left, we, as Dr. Stricker alluded, we are um, working to find out those best practices and um, on the first page of the left side where it says JCSD best practices, expectations and accountability. Um, our purpose, our goal is to investigate and leverage the use of curriculum resources and academic best practices practices to provide consistency and improve JCSD accountability ranking to the top 25% or better on the Mississippi Coast. Um, so that is our purpose. We've been gathering data. Um, then the next step will be to complete and communicate the plan and then implement the plan starting next school year and, um, and then we will periodically revise and improve that plan as we go. Um, you can see I have presented this, this long-term plan um, earlier. Uh, but where there are check marks on that next page, um, those are things that we've already accomplished. So we, we have finished our data gathering. Um, we've conducted, I've conducted classroom walkthroughs, principal interviews, um, and I've reached out to districts that are successful in our weak areas. And um, we've analyzed state, tested, te state test data and our formative test data to include the benchmark um, assessments and the diagnostic assessments um, so that we can inform our discussions with prin principals. Um, we have worked with elementary, middle, and high school administrators um, in, the, in separate occasions so that we can collaborate as we develop our list of best practices. Um, our curriculum specialists have also um, finished their data gathering where they've conducted classroom walkthroughs. They've worked with, um, with the instructional technology specialists. Um, they've audited our assessments um, along with teachers and administrators uh, so that we can come up, we came up with a plan for assessments for next school year. Um, they've collected data and usage information on our programs and our resources so that we can ensure a rigorous and effective curriculum program. And we have analyzed lesson plans for curriculum content and resource utilization. Um, those are the things that we've done so far, and we have begun to compile a list of best practices. Um, those are some of the areas, including instructional, school scheduling, use of assessments, professional development practices, and other categories. We have completed the school scheduling portion of that, which, and we have also completed an assessment plan to encompass all tested subject areas and grade levels. If you'll turn over, um, you can read the rest of that. Those are the things that we've yet to do, but we are on our way. If you'll turn over to the page that looks like this. We've talked about determining what are best practices. We've talked about writing them down, making a list, and doing them. And then how do we make sure that they are being done? If you'll look, we have um, on the left side of that table the frequency or due date 
the, when you're talking about scheduling, generally you start that at the beginning of the school year. So these are the things that will be due by the beginning of the school year. For the, the first best practice, um, RTI schedule integration. Notice this is elementary on the, the, the very top. So each school will have a minimum of 30 minutes of data-driven individualized instruction per day. The documentation for that will be the bell schedule and RTI placement schedule with rosters. Um, the person responsible at the school is the principal and at the district level that will be my department. The next one is no ability grouping. It's actually illegal in the state of Mississippi to group by ability. So we want to ensure that we follow that law and that we are scheduling and grouping kids uh, by enrolling them into classes. That doesn't mean you can't group them inside the class room when you need to differentiate. But when you put them into classes, they should be grouped heterogeneously by, um, by subcategories. And we actually have a process for that in elementary. Um, and we will be doing this. And it looks something like this. Each student has a card, and, and these cards are filled out. Um, Ms. Peterson, you probably did something similar, where you uh, look at each child, and the principal will look at all of the children with a team, and they will make sure that they are um, very intentionally placing those students in their classrooms. So that is something that we will all do. So if you'll look, the documentation for that at the elementary level is the bell schedule, inclusion schedule, the master schedule, and placement cards. The person responsible at the school will be the principal, and the person at the district level will be my department. And if you'll look on down, you can read the rest of it, I'm not going to read it to you, but these pages go through all the elementary expectations, um, including using the district approved course names, um, strategic special education scheduling, and having a minimum of instructional minutes so that we want to ensure that we are prioritizing those subjects with the, um, a minimum of instructional minutes. In middle school, you can see we have expectations, and in high school. And not only are those expectations, there is accountability placed on um, the people responsible in each area. Any questions about that? And then, very last thing, on the right side, this is an example of something we've been wanting to do for years, and that is making consistent the way we name courses. This affects everything we do, from technology uh, to um, making sure uh, we're all on the same page, so if you look, we have worked together as a team, um, Ms. Barnett uh, in the Student Services Department and uh, all the counselors and I worked together and we came up with this, um, this list of courses. Uh, we also have some instructions and abbreviation key and so now everything in SAMS will be um, consistent across the district. Which was not the case. Right. Well, sometimes not even in the same school. Um, it, it's so we. Never understands that. <laughs> so it, what happens well, is. Well, the course is, book did, just that. <laughs> you know, you know. We yeah. need to streamline that. Right. And so we, we've worked uh, worked together to create this um, this plan, naming guide, and we will be um, continuing to work together to complete the other. Um, making sure we're consistent across the best practices. We all, we all have anything to identify semester or nine weeks classes? Um, <coughs> those would be just your typical, instead of saying year long, yeah. you just won't have year long. You just won't have any. Right. So okay. for instance, if it's biology, it'll just say biology. Okay. The course number, is that a standardized number? That's set by the state. Yes. The only question I had, Ms. Westfall, was on the RTI individualized 
does that mean that you can't do a group of three? No. Or no, just well, that it has it to have a, a, a plan for each individual yes, child? that's exactly right. Thank you. The, tra the transition that I, the words I gave at the beginning, it just wasn't an introduction. And so to be very direct about the transition that, that, we're, that I was mentioning, is based on data, and so for parents, teachers, anybody listening to this board meeting right now, based on data, qualitative and quantitative, we have our weekly administrative meetings based on input that we hear, observations, qualitative and quantitative, based on numbers, test results, and so on. We're shifting from suggestions that have been in the past to directives, and I'm just I'll be direct about that. That is the transition that I mentioned. Uh, that that and he presented probably a little nicer than, than that. But it's, if, we, if we see that there's a certain area where we're struggling, and we go into that area and say, "Look, here's our best practices," we were finding that that necessarily still wasn't being done. And so, it's a direct, and that's that's the accountability piece she she went over. So I, I want to let you know that's the transition I was mentioning. When we make that transition here, we will be an A each year. It would be a surprise not to be, because look, we're already doing it. When we take those best practices and, and make it a direct one, if this is what we're doing, that, that is what I was talking about. So, thank you. Okay, next slide. Uh, before Ryan gives his update, uh, I want the board to know that this year, this current year, and next year, I feel very comfortable. Maybe the word very, I don't know, Ryan, maybe I shouldn't put the word very in front of it, but just comfortable that we will meet our fund balance target. And for anybody listening to the board meeting or at the, new to the board meeting, fund balance is your reserve, money you have in reserve, like your checking account. Then the month, what do you have in reserve for the things you didn't plan on? And ours is a pretty conservative number, it's a decent number. And we feel for this year and next fiscal year, we feel pretty comfortable that uh, we should should meet that. However, fiscal year 24, uh, we have some concerns, and so I want the board and community to know, yes, in my office and in my staff meetings, we are already talking about 24. However, there's a lot of moving pieces, uh, and so we will keep you posted on that, uh, but I did want to let you know, yeah, there's some, as, as Ryan put it, uh, some action will need to be taken, I think is how you put it, Ryan. So with that, I'll let Ryan go ahead and give his update. Good evening. Um, I'll just start off by uh, talking about the fund balance there. I agree with Dr. Stricker. Um, I advise him that I feel very confident we're going to hit our target for the end of this school year, and I also feel pretty confident that we're going to hit the target of next year, even if we were to have a budget deficit of some sort going into next year. Um, some of the tailings we have uh, are uh, retirement on the retirement side. We are we were projecting a fairly large increase in the retirement benefits this time last year. The PER system enjoyed record uh, record earnings year really, uh, and then in the fall this past fall they decided not to take action to raise that rate of the required contribution of the employers. So that helped out. Uh, and we'll s continue to see that for the rest of the year, uh, about a million dollars if all goes well. Um, now we are facing some headwinds, fuel um, is just off the charts right now. Uh, we are behind the eight ball on fuel already this time. Um, so we're, we're trying to pull where we can to plug that hole. Um, if it gets to the point where we can no longer plug, then I may come to you uh, as a NIP request to, to, to plug that. Um, so fund balance, I feel very good. Uh, FY24, I am concerned. Um, we have ESSER funds rolling off and costs will keep increasing. Staff will keep getting a step raise, so um, we will have to have some difficult conversations. But again, just to interject, per board input, like on, I, think, I think it was you that brought that up, that, uh, that we make it clear when someone was hired with ESSER money, I think it was you, but it was brought up in the board meeting, that that was made clear to them. So I want you to know, sir, we are going to stick to that, and we already ha we're already having the conversations with those principals that, guys, you know, we, we've used this money to come back from COVID, and that's what the purpose was, um, but, but we have communicated that, so. Well, those, those individuals who were hired 
That is Under correct. those ESSER job descriptions. Yes, sir. They have a good one year notice, I guess. The best we, of our ability. And, and we've already. As soon as we would know. Yep. We've already been having the principals tell them that. Start it now. That so I want to make sure you know that we are following yeah. through. And I'll just add on real quick. What I've noticed is when positions open up, <clears throat> principals who value that ESSER position, they're, they're switching that employee and transferring them, you see them on the agendas every month, into a district funded position so that they can keep them in the future. So, um, transition into the FY23 budget update. MDE sent out the fully funded calculation, the preliminary calculation for us to kind of take a look at the plan around. What we don't have is what the reduction is going to be. Um, if you follow the news and the media, you know, MAP, the fully funded amount is this, this number over here, and the amount the districts actually get is this amount over here. And what they do is they just do a, a just a flat cut. This year was 10.57%. Next year, I don't know what that is, so I just have to plug in an estimate number. And that's kind of how I've gotten our budget built so far. Um, and, and I've got an FYI item on, on this month's agenda which I would like to kind of go over. I have as a present item. I just want to go over that. Um, the district maintenance fund, if I could, and uh, we'll kind of talk about how you guys want to go into the details of that. If you want a special work session, um, if you want me to do one-on-one, -on -one, if you want me to do a virtual, uh, so, so forth. Um, as far as FY23 goes, we're sitting at a $1.4 million budget deficit. Um, that's a significant decrease from last month where we were at $2.4 million. The big driver of that is the free and reduced waivers um, are, are, are being recognized by MDE uh, for all of our students going into next year as at-risk students. Uh, and so for our district, that benefits us by about $1.5 million. We don't know what FY24 looks like. Ashley is vouching as much as she can, telling as many people as she can to reach out to your legislators um, and, and to request that uh, they extend that waiver next year as well to all of our students, but we're still waiting on that. If it goes away, then that's that's a, a significant loss of revenue that we need to keep in the back of our mind. It only adds to my concerns about FY24. Mm -hmm. New payment policy, new prepayment policy. I have draft number two on this um, agenda. What I did is uh, we added limits to fuel and postage. And we also added one more condition surrounding grants that might be facing liquidation deadlines to help us meet those liquidation deadlines if we ever find ourselves in that position. New bus idling reduction policy, there's an item on this agenda. Um, it's driven by some applications that I've already submitted and some that might be coming down the pipe. Um, one of those applications that we've submitted requires us to work on a bus idling reduction policy if we were granted the funds, so that's what that's for. Uh, electric school bus update, um, we've had two manufacturers bring their buses here. We've got to demo them, uh, ride them, touch, feel them, and um, we're still waiting on the, the federal trust to release that grant agreement so that we can sign it. I can send it to Jack, get that um, executed. And in the meantime, in January, if you recall, uh, you guys approved a request to conduct a reverse auction. Since that time, uh, kind of nudged the state and they actually released an invitation for bids for electric buses for next year. Um, those were due March 7th. The contract uh, intent to award was, was supposed to be put out March 10th. I've not seen it yet publicly published by MDE. I reached out to manufacturers, haven't heard back. But assuming one of those uh, manufacturers gets that award, it would be much more uh, advantageous for us to use that from a negotiating standpoint and also from a timeline standpoint to get the buses sooner. Uh, Next item, uh, the potential 16 section solar farm update. I have a, uh, a meeting with Jack, with Bill Cheney, Secretary of State's office, and with the developer and myself next Tuesday to kind of start getting into the terms that will work for all parties. So um, I would be surprised if we don't have a presentation of an, uh, an easement agreement next board meeting for y'all to um, just kind of review and we may even take action if, if you guys are comfortable with that. I'll have a representative uh, from the developer here to answer any questions, um, but we're still working on those terms. And then lastly, um, on your uh, desk in front of you, there should be a copy of the FY21 audit. 
Uh, that's the paper version, the digital version you guys have already seen uh, this past December. So, that's all I have. Unless there's any questions. Solar farm. Uh, what would be the typical duration of the lease that's expected? Great question. Yeah, yeah. So, you got a few phases. During the due diligence phase, you're looking at about four years. So, during that four year. Um, four or 40? Four year. Four, year. four. The first four years, they're just going to be going out there doing some technical analysis, some legal analysis, some environmental analysis, and making sure. It works. Looking for investors, looking for an off taker. Um, if that all checks out um, during that first four years, you, you're basically going to get a, a easement lease revenue from the developer in addition to your hunting and fishing lease. Then during the construction phase, the uh, rental agreement ramps up significantly, and then it, and that's about an eight, 12 to 18 month time period. And then after that, it goes into the commercial operation, and when you hit that, it ramps up even more. So um, if, if you were, you know, the operation phase is anywhere from like a 25 to 40 year time frame. And what I've seen so far is it's a 25 year base and then five year options from the developer side uh, or, or whoever, whoever may buy those assets. Is there something that would make certain sections more attractive than other sections? Yes, absolutely. So um, the, 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 the biggest driver of that from what I'm seeing is how close are you to high voltage transmission lines? And so the section that has Mississippi Powers running, running right through it is the one they, they're very, very interested in. So, so you got substations and, and costs associated with that connecting into that. Any other questions? last couple of board meetings, you all have asked if your dates on projects and projecting those out have not exactly been the easiest to um, generate, but we've done our best. Myself, so I hope y'all have any questions about it. <laughs> no, <I'm not> sure. <laughs> Everybody. Um, but the, I've gotten with Brad, the, the items in red, those are the ones that we've had the architecture do designs for. Um, items in yellow are projected dates. And uh, I'm going to start dating these. You'll notice at the top is 313. Next board meeting, we'll see an updated version of this. So I, I expect, I fully expect slippages in these days. Um, Material lead times, for example, on the chiller at St. Martin High School, last week it was 32-week lead time, this week it's a 40-week lead time. So supply chains are doing nothing but getting longer, and this is going to be the victim of that. On the agenda tonight, we have a NIB request for the uh, access road from transportation office at the Blossom Building to um, the northeast gate, or northeast side of the fence. And what we have is a problem with the facility usage for bus drivers to get to the transportation office. Um, this ease that it be for personal vehicles. It's not for buses, just for personal vehicles to traverse that area. And just to interject there, as I've been mentioning, and, and again, the bus drivers would love to see you. So the board members, I know you're busy, but if you get, if you have a chance, they, they, they've mentioned that. Uh, but we've been meeting with the maintenance staff and, and the bus drivers of each attendance center. And they've appreciated that and we're there and we're taking notes and, and we follow through on all the items that they bring to us and so I want to let you know as board members that was an item brought from employees that are doing the job that, that in Van Cleve that uh, that would really help them out again we can't always give people money as a as, as incentive for what they do for us but uh, that was something that was very important to them Todd you, you could add yeah, the, the real issue is that for them, when, when they go there early in the morning to, to get to the restroom before they go take their routes, they have to jump in their cars and then drive back around, get on ballpark, get on 57, go in there, clock in, 
the same thing, go back and forth. So when the, when the traffic starts to pick up, pick up, it's pretty congested, and it's pretty dangerous for them to be going in and out. And it'll be a lot easier, and it will be a lot safer for the bus drivers to be able to just have a small access road from the back of the building to the actual parking lot uh, to get to the restrooms, to clock in and clock out, and so forth. And, and again, it's something that they had asked for um, in these monthly meetings. And again, this is, let's just lay this on the table. I mean, it, you know, we're having there's a nationwide bus driver shortage. So again, I won't deny it. For me, it's somewhat symbolic on this one. Of, you're a bus driver, this is a concern. You know what? We're going to put our money where our mouth is. We're listening, and this was something we felt was practical and, and would help them out. So, anyway. You go on. Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> <Good. Good. laughs> um, the St. Martin Attendance Center restroom renovation, I use this term loosely as complete. We are um, getting the contingency funding back from this time, um, the final change order. When I say um, loosely, there is one restroom in the um, old field house. I've done extensive research on trying to figure out how it was skipped, but we had three other restrooms, including the stadium, that were um, on the initial list. The middle school shower facility at the old field house at the middle school, when we took off because of the bond issue, the other ones, we took that one off as well. We didn't add that one back. So if we skip down a little bit, working with the county to um, replace our baseball restroom facility as a part of that project. We're going to include the, um, the old field house restroom that was labeled a D on the original, um, the original walkthrough. East Central um, window and flooring update. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to interject there. Um, so as I understand it, we'll be able to come back and get that one restroom they're taking care of. But there were several other... The stadium um, restrooms are a part of that as well. I'll be seeking board direction on those items. On right, how to and so the those. stadium restrooms and also all of the all of the trailers were failed restrooms because they're portable buildings right, and there were the 15 of those and, being yes. utilized. So just, just reiterating that we've got to circle back. We're mm -hmm. able to circle back and take care of all of the D's and failed restrooms across St. Cleveland, East Central, but we haven't been able to com fully complete all those we identified at St. Martin. As well as, as a mitigation for the trailers in general, as I understand the board's direction, we would eventually like to get rid of those trailers mm -hmm. yes. as a whole. Right. So just reiterating that we'll yes. have to hear more about that because there are several restrooms that we have not been able to address, but we were able to go across the rest of the district and take care of things, but there are some yes. held out there that will be coming back to us. So is there a reason, I mean, could you kind of present us with a plan here in the near future to where the board can take action to address it? From, from the trailer standpoint? Yeah, I can, the, 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 the ones that were D's and F's. Yes, well, so, so the 100% the, the with, as I understand it from, we, we automatically filled all the trailers. The one that we forgot about at the, um, and the, the ones that we forgot about at the athletic facilities at St. Martin, yes, I can present a plan. There's going to be a revenue stream that we're going to need help with, but I can definitely present a plan. Yes, yeah. yeah, so we might as well lay it out. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Let's, let's yeah. see what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with regards to East Central window and flooring, we bid those. We had got back a single bid um, for $1.599 million. Um, we're asking on tonight's agenda to reject all bids and go and rebid that project as two separate projects to engender more um, more participation. And we've talked to some contractors that would be um, likely to bid in that. We're awarding the Van Cleve flooring tonight on um, our <coughs> agenda. It's nothing to see, is that? Flooring and windows. Yes, flooring and windows. Um, as I mentioned, we're working with the county to assist in, in building a um, new um, restroom facility at the St. Martin Attendance Center for the baseball field. That will also assist with the, um, the football stadium. We have on the, tonight's agenda to uh, mitigate the dugout flooding at the St. Martin while we're renovating the baseball field drainage. Um, we're looking at um, improving the flooding issue on the dugouts. We opened custodial um, RFP today. We, I'm working with Ryan to make sure that the 
what we have is within budget. This is a little bit of a change from what we've done in the past. We're asking for an increase in services in the um, St. Martin area, but we're not covering, we're not asking the vendor to cover chemicals as we've done in the past. So um, with Ryan's help, we're going to see if this falls within budget. Um, the low bid, just to give you all an um, update on that, was $445,000 from JNL today. Can we provide the adequate manpower to meet the terms of the contract? It's within their, it would be within their um, RFP's um, scope of contract. They're going to, they're going to sign up to meet the what, what JNL mentioned to me during the walkthrough, so right now we use a minimal amount of power, manpower during the day and they come in at night. They're looking to do more of a coverage during the day and just spot clean what they weren't able to take care of during the day at night. And he said that was actually um, more beneficial for him. I think it gives us a chance to do more oversight as well when it's during the daytime so we can see exactly what's going on. Upcoming dates, we have security services RFP, basically what we're doing with Sweatman right now. We have that um, bid opening on March 21st. We are opening um, the ESSER upgrades at uh, JCTC on March 22nd. Of April. Um, April 5th, we open the bids for the baseball field drainage mitigation. And then the big one, St. Martin Middle School HVAC, open on Mar um, April 7th. Any questions? Thank you all very much. Thank you, On the next slide, uh, just a reminder that uh, March 30th, we will have some guests. Uh, we did find a representation from the Jackson County, and that's Brian, what's his last name, David? It's Fulton. Fulton will be attending, and so uh, that will be a, a, a good discussion. Uh, and, and I continue to meet with my uh, central office staff weekly as we prepare for that and I just want to remind the community um, the combination of, of uh, situations we have in our school district that there really is no way around some type of alternative funding and to be direct about bond funding there's just no way around it uh, just to review as you know and I've reiterated it and I will continue to it's important our community understand these things the decommissioning of that power plant in six years is six million, six million dollars annually less revenue for us. We have 1.4 million square feet that is now 35 years old on average. Uh, we have nine million just in roofing and, and uh, uh, parking lots that just is a priority that will need repaired. And this, none of this is to mention, like I said, I, I try to make a point when we have parents coming to our district from outside the, the county, and, the, and, the, and that's, again, we have these three to 5,000 homes that are coming in in the next five to 10 years, three to 5,000. And the price range of these homes, when I talk to these parents, in my experience coming from four different states, their expectations are, for example, we have awesome performing arts, an auditorium. Do we need three of them? Do we need to make adjustments? Yes. An elementary gymnasium, do we'll have time for it? It will rain every day for a week. And, and as you know, I'm in those classrooms often. I was just in East Central Lower uh, uh, late last week. And the poor teachers in there, we have these kids all in one little classroom. That's their PE time. And so those factors I just mentioned don't even mention these, these other items that we need. There is no way around uh, some type of bond funding. But we will discuss that the 30th, but I will continue to put that out there. Uh, because uh, we have great potential in this district, we do well. Our kids achieve, but you know that's an area with facilities we we can do better. We can do better. So, March 30th. Okay, next slide, please. Um, I've already talked about the maintenance and transportation meetings, so thank you for your support on that. Uh, student involvement. I will say I'm very pleased, and I and I know you get a hundred email from me. Uh, but I don't know if you noticed that attendance was back up to last week, this past week, 94.78%. 95% of our kids uh, were in school. This over, That was a week average. Our two-week average is approaching 94%. Uh, so we're very pleased with that, and I truly believe it's you know the work of our teachers and 
and staff and so on, but I mean, it's, it's keeping the kids involved. Uh, extracurricular activities. Again, I don't expect you to read all, all the information I put out, but the newsletter that I wrote last week is, is you know, it's important in our community understanding that. For example, wrestling. That wrestling program that we started is going to impact young people, uh, a group of young people that is not reached with the music program, not reached with the basketball team. And uh, actually, the, the girls wrestling, not reached with cheerleading and so on. Uh, St. Martin, who did well at the state, I don't know if you had a chance to read that uh, email, did very well at the state competition. Practices, and, and David, correct me if I'm wrong, but practices on the uh, stage with a half mat, a used mat that they have to give back. And when they, when they for their bus rides to uh, the events, if the coach doesn't drive, I don't. I think they had to fund it themselves. And that's not, that's not anything against you, Mr. Baggett, or, or, or what have you. We have a budget. Uh, but I will tell you this, the uh, school where I was superintendent for 10 years in Michigan, we won, I think, up to 18 state titles in wrestling. The discipline of those young people that are in wrestlers, those were my leaders in the classroom, in the hallways, and not only on the athletic field. I just don't want to underestimate the power of these programs that we're implementing. That wrestling program, I would have never thought would have taken off like it did. And so, again, these are all factors. It goes back to that last slide, you know, of, of some type of funding. These are life-changing programs for young people that aren't reached through these other sports and so on. Uh, so, uh, again, I want to thank the wrestling coaches, drama program, all the, all the, the people out there making this happen. Uh, our safety numbers are pretty consistent uh, where we were last year at this time. Or right, correct me if I'm wrong on that. And leadership. Um, I will say this. The average year's experience with our administrative team, people can start to go. And so evaluations are complete. We are going to be working very hard to mentor our younger leaders. I'm very proud of Ashley Allred. She was uh, Administrator of the Year, and she's at uh, Bank Cleave Upper. And Todd, let me correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, everything, all the feedback, got, feedback I've received is doing an excellent job. But we need it. We're in the process now of mentoring these younger, uh, less experienced administrators because if all our administrators are around our table, I would say what half probably could could leave. Uh, I hope they don't. So we, we're it's probably about three quarters. Yeah, I was the conservative, and uh, so we. I want you to know we're at. We're, evaluation was very important. It took me a while. We are out of the evaluation. We are in the mentoring process to to develop these uh, younger, less experienced administrators, so we can hand the baton off, uh, hopefully seamlessly. So, and that's all. Any, any questions? Thanks. Four minutes. How much? 40? That's a, wow. that's, a, that's a record. <laughs> I don't think we asked here. No, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we added. Oh, yeah, no. Um, thank you. I forgot. All right. All right. Uh, community, we had a community member that would like to say this. Sorry. Okay. Thank so, you, so, Amy. So beforehand, um, just, well, you go ahead and approach them. Just to remind everybody of what kind of limitations of this, this is kind of our first test of this policy. Um, three minutes to make comments. Um, the board's not obligated to engage in debate or discussion, uh, but if it, if it merits further discussion or investigation, we're going to hand that off to the superintendent. Um, if it's something that takes longer than three minutes, then maybe we need to consider it being a public participation instead of a public comment. I don't think that would be necessary. Okay. First, I'd like to thank the board, Dr. Strip, give me this for a few minutes. Uh, I'm really excited. I see a lot of great things going on in our district. And Dr. Stricker, I think you were spot on that athletes, student athletes, always students first, athletes second, are better leaders in our community, mm -hmm. on and off the field. I'm sorry to introduce myself. My name is Lee Bailey. I'm from the St. Martin community. I've been a football official for 26 seasons. I've done Wee fields to Division I bowl games. And one thing that's important is a coaching staff and how they affect kids today. I see it. Not only football field, but other courts, volleyball, wrestling, how they affect and they mentor these students. And I saw that on today's agenda, a presentation of the uh, compensation review. This is exciting. 
I'm going to tell you three events. Back in the early, uh, early 80s, a young lady was thinking about playing basketball, but there was no girls league. So a coach told her, try for the boys. She made that team. There was a coach three years later who told a young man who uh, was told that he couldn't graduate if he didn't pass a reading exam and move on to college. That coach took time out of his class to spend time with him in the library. I'm going to tell you a story that's happening right now in this school district today. Two years ago, a young man, sixth grade, played baseball. And I may get emotional, please forgive me. But his self esteem was down, though. He enjoyed the sport of baseball. But his grades were slipping. His self esteem was low. He didn't try for baseball. For the middle school thing, he didn't think he was good enough. So the head coach of the program invited him to be manager. So his parents fought with him for six months to give it a try. Said, give it a week. If you like it, you continue. If you don't, it's okay. After the first week, he can't wait to go back. So now this is his second season. He goes after school, middle school, every day to be with that program. And we asked him, and I, I apologize, I gave away who he was, but uh, why? He said, the coach may need me to do something. His self-esteem went up. He's an A student now. That's one coach, not teaching him how to swing or throw a ball, but self in life. That's the coaching staff we have today. I'm going to bring up two coaches that I think deserve a comment. One is Scott Frost from the Central Florida. Extremely great program brought up out of a group of five, now considering one of power fives, who's now from Nebraska. And I think everybody would know Lane Kiffin who was at FIU, now at Ole Miss. How their staff, not just the head coach, but how their staff interacts with their students, and how they strive to make grades. In the media scrimmage I went to, they said, hey, study y'all's lap to this, be there in an hour. And he would tell them, make sure you're there, because we can't have failures in this, in this program. The coaches that we have today in this district, I saw all of them this season, from East Central, Bankley, to St. Mark. Um, are phenomenal. The staffs are good. What I don't want to see is to understand that one of them may leave because they can make a better compensation somewhere for their family. That young girl that I just told you about was Sarah Thomas. First female to be in the NFL. That young man was me. Thank you. Thank you. Very well put. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to class too. <laughs> Moving on then, that puts us at um, item D1, Ryan. <coughs> Approve request to return $5,000 performance bond uh, Pro River land and timber for the completed timber harvest on 167S8W. Uh, do I have a motion for this item? Motion. Motion on Mr. Howell. Second. Second on Ms. Dobson. Any discussion? Any discussion? All in favor? Five and um, That was an item you said you wanted to uh, present or an FYI that you yeah, wanted to I discuss, Ryan? Right? Just briefly touch upon that, please. Okay, sure. Go ahead. And if we could open that attachment up. So this is the format that you're going to see the budget presented in each month. And tonight I just want to talk about one fund. Uh, it's the first one, 1120 District Maintenance. That is where um, our unallocated, unrestricted funds sit. And that is what I use to base our fund balance targets off of. So there are several pages to each fund. And if you're interested, um, what I'd like to do at another time, either prior to a board meeting or during a work session or individually is to, for those who are interested, go over in detail um, what you're looking at so that you can have a better understanding of, of uh, the numbers. Uh, in the past, we've kind of done the, the, the budget in a quasi Excel and in our software and kind of married the two. This year, I want to focus and use software to its full potential. Um, 
So for tonight's discussion, just the, um, the district maintenance fund, real quick, you can see the revenues at the top. Local is our ad valorem and our in lieu. State is our NAP for the most part, as well as our add-on program, so SPED, driver's ed, CTE, transportation. Federal sources, uh, most of that is our ROTC program, where we get reimbursed by the Air Force. You can see the total revenue number, 82, almost 83 million. And then if we go down to the expenditures, you can see um, how that's broken out between instruction and support. Instruction is basically everything that occurs inside the classroom. Uh, support would be your uh, office personnel, your principals, uh, general employees uh, like myself. Uh, and then at the bottom there you see total expenditures. Revenues are significantly higher than expenditures uh, within that district fund, uh, district maintenance fund. And that excess, that 12.9 million is kind of misleading because that's before we transfer money out of uh, the district maintenance fund to other funds such as special education, uh, such as our at-risk program, uh, such as CTE for, the, for what uh, the state and, and, and the federal government doesn't pick up. And so if we go down to the second page, um, if, you, if you look at the big number there, that 14.2 million by other transfers out, those are the transfers out of that fund into other funds so that they can break even. Okay? So the, the, uh, the, the $30,000 transfer in is just our Calm Data virtual payment rebate program revenue that we receive from that, but mostly it's money going out of the fund. And then that net change in fund balance. That's basically your budget deficit, 1.36 million as of today. So when I start presenting these um, combining budget reports is what they're called, I want you to focus on that number every month. If nothing else, focus on that number. That's your budget deficit um, is where you're going to find that. And, and then just below that you can see the estimated um, fund balance at July 1st, 2022, which would be the beginning of our budget year and then ending the year, uh, July, or somewhere, June 30th, 2023. Um, and that, that beginning number, as I alluded to earlier, I expect that to go up uh, as we uh, progress through this current year and get a better <coughs> idea of where we're going to end the year at. But if anybody's interested, I would love to kind of go into more details about the different funds, um, either again, either before a board meeting during a work session or individually, or I can do a virtual. So, thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah. How would you prefer to eat? Any thoughts on how you prefer? I think a workshop individually, virtual. I, personally, I would love to be able to do something maybe ahead of one of the workshops that we do. Um, like maybe before our, our board facility workshop, we can kind of marry those two together, come in a little bit early and have a discussion with Ryan and his board. And then, That's great. And then we can do that together and circle up. Can we do that? Yeah, that back quicker? out an hour. Yeah. Do one hour with Ryan. Kind of so go four. So we'd start here at 4 o'clock and then we'd just kind of segue into the facilities meeting while all those numbers are still fresh on their mind. Can we all do that? Yeah. 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 Ryan? Right. Um, moving on then, uh, item D12, approve open claim docket. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion by Mr. Dickerson. Second. Second by Ms. Peterson. Any discussion? All in favor? Five no. Item E1, approve NIV request for $14,733 to build a road and install a gate between the transportation office and the northeast bus lines. We have a motion. Motion. Motion by Mr. Howell. Second. Second by Ms. Dobson. Any discussion now? No, we already answered that. Okay. All in favor? And that takes us to all the way down to L10, 16th section leases. Uh, item 10B, approve assignment of read lease. Do have a motion? Motion. Motion by Mr. Dobson. Second by? Second by. No. Any discussion? All in 
Paul's favorite. I don't know. And then the new item we added to the agenda, L11, the contract for the uh, single uh, use of the community center. Uh, motion. motion for that, Mr. Dickerson. Second by. Second. Second by Ms. Peterson. Discussion? All in favor? I don't know. And I believe that takes us to uh, consent agenda items. I have a motion to approve consent agenda. Motion. motion by Mr. Dickerson. Second. Second by Ms. Dobson. All in favor? I don't know. Motion to enter executive session. Motion. Motion by Mr. Powell. Second. Second by Ms. Dobson. All in favor? Five and no. Thank you, everybody. Six o'clock. Why not? That's how you do it. No, they all sign.